Uh, number one, thanks so much for, for being here. Uh, obviously, this is one of those moments where you hold your breath and once you receive the call and you hope that the initial information uh, is not as revealing or as bad as what actually occurred. So uh, while uh, earlier today, at 11.53 a.m. exactly, we were meeting with dozens of principals, we did receive a call of a brawl here at Van Nuys involving 11 students, it turns out. As a result of that uh, incident, one student, at least one student, produced what is at this point an unidentified weapon, an object, and stabbed two students. Those two students have been transported to local hospitals with non-life-threatening injuries at this point. Their condition continues to be monitored. In addition to that, uh, two additional students sustained some injuries as a result of battery. One of those two students was also transported to the hospital. So three students in total were transported to the hospital, two uh, for stabbing wounds, one as a result of uh, battery uh, actions. Uh, the fourth student was treated uh, at the school with minor injuries. At this point, three individual students have been detained and are currently being questioned uh, by uh, law enforcement. The school was placed uh, immediately under lockdown shortly after 10.53 a.m. Uh, before we knew all of the elements of this specific incident. I'd like to speak a little bit about the response time from incident to police uh, arriving here at Van Nuys. The incident took place around 10.53 a.m. At 10.56, a little bit less than three minutes later, police was on site addressing uh, the incident. And very quickly, some of the individuals uh, were identified, resulting in them being detained and currently questioned. Uh, we have now sent uh, two messages, both in English and Spanish, to the entire uh, parent population of this school. The first message was with all of the information we had at that time. The second information actually providing additional detail, clarifying that the lockdown is not the result of an imminent threat to the school, uh, rather uh, in response to the initial incident and to ensure that there's full stabilization of school conditions. Um, the school is calm. Students are in their classrooms. Uh, nutrition, their lunch, will actually be brought to their classrooms rather than having all students converging uh, in the cafeteria or the quad. By the way, the incident took place in the quad of the school, rather popular area and reasonably congested. Um, we expect uh, in, in a bit of time from now uh, that all activities at school will resume as normally scheduled and we anticipate that uh, dismissal, as, at the end of the day, uh, will be conducted uh, as, as scheduled as well. Uh, we may opt, based on the direction from the principal, for some degree of staggering dismissal to reduce uh, crowds around school. Uh, let me address an issue that, uh, that obviously probably some of you would, would ask anyway. Uh, as a result of board policy, uh, going back uh, close to two years ago, there's currently no policy that allows for school board police officers on campus uh, during the regular school day. However, once you know better, you must do better. And since I arrived in Los Angeles, I have directed uh, regional superintendents and the principals, if they know of, suspect of, have any information that would put them in a position uh, of feeling that the presence of a police officer as a uh, as an agent of a detente to ensure safety and security in school uh, would be appropriate, they can request the presence of that officer. As of today, Van Nuys uh, will have the presence of an officer within uh, its, uh, its school facilities. This is a school that houses actually two different schools, Van Nuys as well as the continuation school. Van Nuys serves about 2,200 students. 
the continuation school around 200 students, 2,400 students considering what took place here today warrants for the presence of at least one police officer. This is the type of incident that is difficult uh, to anticipate um, and we have to rely on what people know and can convey to us. These don't necessarily happen spontaneous, spontaneously. So we continue to urge parents and students to tell us about what they know so we can prevent these types of incidents from occurring. With that said, the response time was very appropriate. We have on site right now uh, additional counselors and psychiatric social workers to address the trauma that some students and staff may be experiencing. Uh, those additional staff members will continue to be deployed to this school for as long as necessary. We are already, uh, also ready to provide counseling support uh, to the families of the students involved. Uh, unas palabras en, en español. Esta mañana a las 10 y 53 de la mañana ocurrió un incidente que involucró 11 estudiantes. Debido a las acciones tomadas por estos estudiantes, cuatro estudiantes uh, fueron heridos. Dos de ellos apuñalados con una arma todavía no identificada. Dos estudiantes fueron transportados para hospitales locales con heridas pero no mortales. Dos estudiantes uh, fueron agredidos y también sufrieron ciertas lesiones. Tenemos consejeros especi especializados para hablar con nuestros estudiantes y apoyar a los padres de familia. Tenemos la presencia de la policía que llegó aquí tres minutos después eh, del incidente y hemos tomado las medidas necesarias para asegurar condiciones normales en esta escuela. Tres estudiantes uh, están siendo entrevistados por entidades policiales debido a, a su participación en este incidente violento que involucró 11 estudiantes. Quiero asegurar a los padres de familia que nosotros no aceptamos este tipo de comportamiento por parte de nadie. Lo vamos a investigar y vamos a aplicar las consecuencias necesarias para mandar un mensaje fuerte a nuestra comunidad. Al mismo tiempo, vamos a apoyar de un punto de vista psicológico a nuestros estudiantes y a sus familias. Uh, let me introduce uh, school board member Scott Schmerlson, uh, who ably represents this school and this district. Scott? Yes, thank you, Superintendent. I am board member Scott Schmerlson. I live in this community. Van Nuys High School is one of my 105 schools that stretch from North Hollywood to Porter Ranch. Let me just say that Van Nuys High School is a great high school. Wonderful academic programs, wonderful magnets, arts and music. I've been here for the productions. And let me tell you, in my 50th year in education, I started in 1973, you cannot have a good program without safety. Safety and excellent programming go together. I have been fighting and fighting and fighting to allow school police to be on campus at my high schools and middle schools when requested, when requested. Board District 3 survey, parents want school police. Students want school police. Teachers, staff want school police. We all want school police. And I thank the superintendent for saying that there will be an officer here at Van Nuys High School. Every school that wishes to have school police should have school police. Thank you very much. Lieutenant, is there something you'd like to add? No. No? Okay. Any questions for me? Superintendent, can you tell us more about the victims, ages and types of injuries? So, uh, as I said, uh, we're still determining the extent of the injuries. What I can tell you at this point, based on last information obtained from our staff, but also from medical entities, is, is that the injuries are not life-threatening, applicable to the two students who were stabbed 
with a, a weapon that has been described to us by some as a knife, but we have not identified the weapon yet. Um, there is an ongoing investigation taking place uh, in the quad of the school where the incident took place. The other two students, as I said, uh, were victims of battery as a result of that brawl. One sustained uh, more serious injuries, also not life-threatening. The other one was treated on site and released. The ages uh, at this point, uh, I've been made aware of some of the students being in ninth grade uh, so far, but I'm assuming that others, based on information we received, may be in other grades. We still have not ascertained that. I think some of the parents were wondering what it would take instead of being on a defensive posture and having police off you know, campus. Three minutes is a great response time, but to have them on campus and make, you know, I'm not saying this incident could have been prevented, but what would I already addressed that. Superintendent, you say that um, the school can request uh, a police presence. Had one been requested here previously? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, parents say that they, a lot of people we're talking about, uh, talking to, say that there has been ongoing issues, there's been ongoing tensions, and they've had concerns about violence leading up to this. So can you talk to, um, or speak to whether or not the school was aware that some, something like this could be happening? Sure. So number one, um, at the central office, we were not aware of what we have learned since we arrived here through the voice of some parents, and that's important to us. So we'll be very interested in investigating not only this incident, but also allegations and information about what has been conveyed to us, to my staff, in speaking with some parents as some preceding uh, elements that may have contributed to today's incident. So we're going to investigate both the incident as well as elements that have preceded uh, today's incident. Uh, we pay close attention to the voice of parents. Uh, and I want to reiterate that uh, we need as much information as possible. Um, and what I said earlier, specific to the presence of law enforcement, despite uh, board policy adopted about two years ago, which actually precedes my arrival in Los Angeles, uh, I have authorized principals and region superintendents with the ability to request the presence of law enforcement based on the threat of incidents, known information that could be, uh, could be thwarted as a result of the presence of law enforcement, or based on a series of minor incidents that could escalate into a more serious type of incident. Uh, but I have no evidence that a request for law enforcement in this school uh, had been made prior to today's incident. Notwithstanding that, uh, as I said earlier, uh, Police officers will be assigned to this school for the very obvious reasons. Do you believe this is at all gang-related? Uh, I will leave that determination to law enforcement, uh, but what I can tell you is that based on some of the information from the parents mainly, there appears to be a possible connection uh, to gang conflicts uh, that ha are active outside of school and may have brought the issues back into school. And I want to touch on that. When you look at crime rates, incidents in the community at large, they by far exceed incidents within schools. Okay? With that said, one incident like this one is one incident too many. So uh, schools continue to be the safest places for kids, notwithstanding what took place here today. But we do need additional information from parents not after the incident happens. We need parents, if there is an incident, if they have information, communicate directly with the principal, the assistant principal, with counselors. Let, let us build the case and provide the assistance in a preventive manner rather than a reactionary uh, fashion. Si el incidente uh, sucedió dentro del de plantel escolar, involucró 11 estudiantes y basado en comunicaciones uh, hemos tenido con el padre de familia, algunos de ellos indicaron que esto es debido a conflictos que existen entre entidades fuera de la escuela y se manifestaron dentro de la escuela durante este incidente. Uh, 
Let me uh, let me uh, get uh, Andrew Chait, uh, our chief of schools, to address that issue. When a school is on lockdown, students and staff remain on campus until the lockdown is lifted. So no, at this time, students cannot be released. Once the lockdown is lifted, we will facilitate the dismissal of students as needed. But will the lockdown last them through the normal school day? Or because it sounded like the school is going to continue with uh, fairly normal operations. During a lockdown, instruction continues. So basically what's going on in there right now is that teachers are inside classrooms with students carrying on like they normally would their normal instructional delivery. As far as lockdowns, particularly in these kinds of situations, we take our direction from law enforcement. And I'm sorry, the announcement just said that you were, they were waiting for the LAPD to release them. So is it the LAPD or is it the LA School Police? It's a collaborative effort at this point between LAPD and school police as far as when the lockdown can be lifted. Okay, and any ETA on that? No, sir. What are you waiting on, Phil? I think we've answered about as much as we can in terms of respecting the investigation that's going on. Just to clarify, has the weapon that was used in the stabbing been recovered? We have one object uh, that's been taken into possession by law enforcement that's involved in this. One, one last question, and, and this is from parents we've talked to. Considering the tensions right now going on in the world, might it not be a good preventive measure to have an officer at the school let me be very clear. You know what, second guessing at this point, uh, considering the fact that we do not have currently, nor have we ever had in the history of LAUSD, enough officers to staff all schools. So th that is a proposition that is just not realistic, right? There are some states, some districts where that is the policy. It's not the case in Los Angeles. And I say that because we should not create an expectation that cannot be fulfilled, right? Uh, with that said, uh, and uh, as stated by board member Schmerlson, and I absolutely concur with it, we do need to revisit the existing policy uh, to allow greater latitude for more expedient deployment of law enforcement resources. That is a must, and I have been pretty insistent on that since I arrived, and that's why uh, we have created an opportunity based on a request uh, or based on our own knowledge of an incident, imminent threat, or a combination of incidents that could lead to a greater type of, uh, of incident. We have directed uh, the placement of law enforcement. Uh, as to this, what I heard as a second part of your question, yes, we are living through very troubled and troubling times. And uh, our kids are listening, watching, absorbing, and learning, unfortunately, mainly because of the actions of adults. And that is why we have provided resources to students in schools. That is why we have redoubled our efforts in terms of additional counseling staff to address some of these incomprehensible, right, issues that many of our youth are facing in our schools and in our community. Uh, we will use this uh, very disturbing incident uh, as yet again another opportunity to improve our processes. But as it was stated, uh, the response time was very good, less than three minutes. The police action that ensued, very, very strong. The counseling support, very strong. The communication with parents via now four robotic messages two in English and two in Spanish, one shortly after the incident, and the second one reassuring parents that despite the fact that the school is under lockdown, uh, you know, the students in the school are safe. Uh, I want to address the question that I believe a gentleman asked. So the reason for the, the ongoing lockdown is not because of ongoing threats to the students in the school. It is actually to provide law enforcement, those who are investigating, um, ample time and space for them to conduct the investigations. I said, when you ring the bell, students actually go to the quad. That's where they get nutrition, that's where they congregate, that's where they socialize. So it's very, very difficult to ring the bell, allow that level of traffic, while simultaneously you have law enforcement conducting uh, their own work of investigating uh, the incident. Superintendent, to that issue of logistics, can you talk to us about what happens at 1053 in the day? Was that a break period? 
um, were they passing between classes? Were these kids outside of class? Yeah. So at 1053, students were actually um, engaged in nutrition. So they were accessing, you know, the free breakfast that we provide uh, to uh, to our students. So it was it was normal, natural, right, for the students to be in that area. And I understand that police arrive within three minutes. What's the policy for, for example, a brawl breaks out? What happens in that three minutes? Do teachers intervene? Do, do what, what does that look like for three minutes of fighting? Yes. Um, as, are you referring to um, what the law enforcement re response or, or would what be? What happens on oh, campus? Because Andres. the police don't yeah. arrive yeah, yeah. for, for sure, three sure, minutes. Sure. So what happens? Is, is, is it a teacher's job to step in? What, what happens? When students are out on nutrition or lunch, basically any period when they're outside of the classroom, they're being supervised by additional adults. In most cases, it's not going to be teachers per se. They're at a duty-free time during that time. So it's going to be principals, assistant principals, counselors, campus aides, and staff. In this instance, administration immediately intervened within that three-minute period to break up the fight. Were any of the, those administrators or adults injured at all? Not to our knowledge, no. Yeah, but in those types of situations, I mean, ultimately the principal is, uh, is the captain of this entity, right? And uh, more often than not, and I can tell you just, as I said, we began our day today uh, meeting with, uh, with dozens of principals. And when principal conveyed uh, an incident that uh, he had just experienced where he intervened uh, in an altercation between students, it's what we do, it's what they do, um, until such time as, as law enforcement, if necessary, uh, in fact, the lives. Any other question? Um, before you wrap up, though, for those of us that got to the party late, can we get at least an overview of what, what took place before we got to, before you got to the Q&A? We can either do it here or off to the side. Very quickly. Uh, 10.53 this morning, uh, a brawl involving uh, 11 students took place in a very popular, well-traveled area of the school, the quad, uh, during their nutrition time. Uh, out of those 11 students, two were stabbed with what we consider at this point an unidentified object or weapon. Um, those two students were transport, transported to local hospitals with non-life-threatening injuries based on the information that had been provided to us. In addition to those two students, two other students were battered and one was also transported to the hospital, also with non-life-threatening injuries. The other one was cared for on site. As a result of that incident and based on the police response, which took place less than three minutes, uh, three individuals have been uh, detained and are currently being questioned. And no student has been arrested uh, as of now, but the investigation continues. The school continues to be uh, on lockdown, not because of any imminent threat, uh, but to provide ample space and time for the investigators to conclude uh, their uh, investigative work. As soon as the lockdown is lifted, students will be able to move within the school along with their bells. Instruction continues in the classroom, and because the students are in the classroom, nutrition is being delivered uh, to them in the classroom. Based on what we know at this point, we believe that school will dismiss at its regular time at the conclusion of the school day. We sent four messages to parents in English and Spanish, two in English, two in Spanish. The first two messages explaining to parents in the most basic format what had taken place. The second message reassuring parents that the lockdown was a result of the incident that had taken place, not as a result of an ongoing threat to the school. The last thing I will say again, as I said earlier, based on existing policy, there are no permanent deployment of law enforcement entities to the school. However, since I arrived here, based on conditions in schools, I have directed both regional superintendents as well as principals to be free to request the presence of police on campus, despite the existing policy, if they felt the conditions so warranted it. I stand by that decision, and I believe we're getting to a point where a re-examination of the policy may be warranted. Have you had any requests since you put that directive out? Uh, yes, we have. And we have, across the district, a number of deployments currently. Approximate number? Do you know? About a dozen. About a dozen. Okay. Very well. You said that three people were detained. Were they all students or are they all students at this school? 
all 11 students who participated in the initial uh, brawl are students, uh, and obviously the three students who have been detained are students, as well as the victims that were transported. They too are students. At this school? At this school. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.